Hi guys, it's Kine. Bitch, if this is not in focus, I swear to God. Oh my god, it has been such a long time since I've done a wig tutorial on this channel. I actually wasn't intending on doing a tutorial on this style in particular, but I got so many requests on it, I feel like motherfucking Jaclyn Hill doing highly requested videos. Lots of you guys wanted to see how I styled this blonde wig that I've been wearing a lot recently. I don't know, I've just been having a blonde phase of my life. I love the style, it's like easy, it's quick, I can get it done in like 24 hours and it lasts for so long. Like, even if you wear it a lot of times and it like, kind of gets messy and ratty, you can kind of play it off like, oh, like, I just, like, woke up like this. This is actually an older wig of mine. I wore it um, in my ponytail tutorial that I did a couple of months ago. It's the same exact wig, but I feel like it's easier to style wigs when they've kind of been through it and you've kind of worn it a few times. The first time, the hair is kind of new. It's, like, shiny and, like, slippery, but the second or third time around, it's, like, cracked into shape. I don't know, you can tell I don't really have a firm grasp of how this stuff works. Synthetic wigs nowadays I feel like are such good quality, you don't even really need to stack them to get lots of volume, you just need to kind of take your time teasing it, um, but I'm going to show you all of that and more in this video, so let's get started. Okay guys, so this is the wig that we're working with today, already been worn many a time by me, and if I'm being honest, I'd probably wear it again, but you guys were the ones who wanted to see how I styled this, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how I brush it out, straighten it, and so I can start over from scratch and show you how I did this style from start to finish. So um, what I'm gonna do, I've already shown this in many videos of mine, um, I like to get my steamer and then I'm gonna brush this out so I can straighten it, remove all the teasing and the tangles so that it's um, basically just bone straight. So this is a process I usually leave out because it's really long and I, I normally film tutorials on new wigs that I don't have to do this on. But what we're doing here is we're just undoing all of the remnants of the previous style that was in this wig. Whether it used to be in braids or an afro or an updo or even if the previous style was the exact same one I'm doing here and I just want to refresh it and update it. I still do this process so I can start over the styling process with a blank canvas. If you want more details on how all of this works I have an in-depth video about all of this. Took me about two-ish hours. You can see I'm taking a lot of care to each small strand. It's not as simple as just running a brush through the wig and calling that detangling it. It really takes a lot of patience. Probably this can give you an idea as to why custom styled wigs are so expensive. It takes a lot of money to look this cheap. Oh my god, okay, so that took me what, like two, three hours? Far too long, but I wanted to show you, um, if you are obviously working with a brand new wig that's straight out of the bag, you don't need to do all that, but this is the method that you're gonna wanna do if you're doing the style on an older wig that um, has some styling in it. You might think that if you're switching styles or just kind of updating a style, you would wanna wash the wig, but um, I don't really wash my wigs that often because washing really is only gonna take up product like fragrance or hairspray or things of that sort. Um, the only real way to take out the frizz and the knots and the tangles and the curls is doing this method that I showed you, which in fact I already have a full in-depth video about, which you may or may not have seen. Um, I'll link it down in the description if you haven't seen that, but um, now is when we're going to get into the actual styling of this wig. Oh my god, I spent so long brushing this out and straightening it that um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this up in rollers, steam it in place, and then I'm going to go to bed, let it dry overnight. I get a lot of questions about the rollers I use. They're called wire mesh rollers. They're made of wire mesh, hence the name, which just has lots of holes in it to stick a pin through so you can secure it to the head. I can only ever find these online. I get mine on eBay. I just search up wire mesh. Diane is the brand, I'm pretty sure. 
Bobby Pins' website also sells them. Most rollers you can find at the beauty supply store are made to go in your real hair and can be held in place with like a clip. But I find that a clip is not as rigid as this method. Like you can't roll those quite as tightly or the Velcro ones that are supposed to grip on their own. You can't see but I'm doing like air quotes. They're supposed to grip. It always catches on the hair. I find it that causes more problems, but you know, whatever you can get your hands on, try to make it work and be crafty. But if you do have the money to order online, I highly recommend wire mesh rollers. As always, I'm putting the hair underneath a plastic bag and steaming this with my garbage steamer. This just really cooks the hair and makes that synthetic fiber kind of mold to the curl. If you don't have a steamer, I made a video about how you can use just stovetop steam. <laughs> Somebody on Twitter once sent me a picture of them. They like hung up their wig to the ceiling of their kitchen over the stove. <laughs> I had a good laugh, but I'm telling you whatever works. Okay, we're back. So it's been overnight. I've let these curls cool down and dry, and now I'm going to take them out of the rollers. Okay, so I've taken down probably the first two rows of curlers here and instead of just taking down all of the curlers I'm gonna start by actually teasing these back sections of hair the thing is we're gonna get to teasing every section of hair anyway but doing it this way teasing while you take down the rollers it just helps you be more organized because all of the hair is kind of out of the way so I'm gonna tease in about the same size sections that I already had in the rollers the great thing about this wig in particular is that um, I've kind of already used it and worn it multiple times which makes the teasing step go a little bit easier I find that hair um, it's easier to tease and to work with when it's a little bit older of a wig. Sometimes new wigs, they um, are harder to tease because the hair is so um, shiny, it's so slippery. So I'm just teasing by backcombing the roots right about a couple of inches away from the head. I don't go any farther than that. And the idea is just to make the hair as fluffy as possible because we want really big voluminous hair. So we want to add a lot of air into the wig. You'll notice also that when I'm teasing, my brush is only at the roots and my other hand is holding the end of the hair. That's because I want to preserve the length of it, you know? I don't want to push all of the hair into the roots because I want the hair to still be long. So, now that I've teased those sections, I'm going to take down more rollers and then tease those as I go along. I see what a lot of people do when they want to tease their hair is they'll just tease it in the mirror as they're about to go out of the house or like about to go on stage. I don't tend to do that. I find that it really makes a difference to just take your time, get yourself a nice wig stand or um, have somebody else do it on your head, I guess. Because when you can take the hair section by section, that's when it really makes a difference. Just because this way you're really taking advantage of each and every strand of hair in the wig and you're just um, almost kind of getting the mileage out of the wig that you want by um, separating it into the smallest sections and teasing each of those. Now towards the front here, this front hairline, you want to be a little bit more careful with how you tease because I don't want to tease here and have frizziness that I can't get rid of. In the back it was okay because I could kind of cover it up with more hair, but in the front what I'm going to do is I'm only going to tease um, the back side of it, which you won't see. So just like this. That way from the back we have our little cloud of teasing, but from the front it's really easy to smooth out. Another thing that I like to do sometimes is, um, you'll notice especially if you tease the sections that you put into the rollers, these sections of hair now really want to be separate because I teased them separately and I curled them separately. So what I can do to kind of stick them together so that there's not that obvious gap in the hair um, is I'll tease them together just like this. That just really ties the two sections together to make the wig look like one cohesive unit. You don't want bald spots or gaps places. That's also the reason why I've started just um, setting my wigs like this because I found that when I set the wigs like this, there would be gaps here where the rollers meet because the hair wanted to split at that point. You see what I mean here where I say it's hard to keep track of things, um, which is why I like teasing it section by section as I take them out of the rollers. That way it's obvious to me which sections still need to be teased and which don't. Just because once you have all of this hair here, it's kind of hard to navigate through and find where you are. 
I've seen some teasing tutorials where people um, kind of count the number of brush strokes they give to each section, which can be a good idea if you really want um, to emphasize the consistency of the volume in your hair. I don't tend to do that. For me, um, I tend to see it more of just as a feel. And I stop teasing at the point where I achieve this kind of rat's nest that I see with everything. So I tend to tease it right up to the point where I can see that kind of rat's nest forming at the base and no more than that because we do want to smooth it out and we don't want to make it too hard on ourselves to style it later on. The bangs and the sides, um, and basically all of the hair that's framing the face is the most important part. What I like to do on the side here is I'll tease right under this. That way the side hair is kind of going out like that and giving me more volume this way. It's hard because the bangs, you want to add lots of strength so you have that height to frame your face with, but you don't want to tease it too intensely because then it's going to be hard to make it look smooth again. So you kind of have to find a balance that you'll only really find through practice. All right, so this is what our wig looks like after all of the teasing is done. It's very Bonnie Tyler on meth. So now comes the hard part of smoothing it out. And the first thing that I always um, try to sort of discern is where my part is. And I like to do a side part right about here. And I kind of already defined it using my rollers. So I'm just gonna reinforce it by brushing this hair here in opposite directions. First, I want to brush all the hair back before I even do that. But then I'm going to start to brush it to the side where I want it to fall. And you don't want to dig your brush into it too hard at all, because you really only want to attack the surface of the hair, um, because we want to preserve that cloud of teasing that's underneath. You'll see I have my thumb here where I want the hair to kind of be lifted up. So that way when I brush it down, it doesn't pull the entire thing down because I want to preserve this little lift right here at the side of the face. So I'm placing my thumb there and then I'm going to smooth all that hair down. The thumb is just an anchor. And as you can see, all the frizziness of it goes away and it just goes into this beautiful wave pattern. Now you'll notice it didn't take that much work for me to just brush it out and get this beautiful wave pattern. And the way that you get this is really all in the way that you curl your hair with your rollers. You want to make sure that they're put in very neat and uniform. So like rows of curlers would be aligned with rows of curlers. That way you have rows of waves aligning with rows of waves. So the same thing that I did here where I anchored it with my thumb, I'm going to do the exact same thing up here. I want this sort of high lifted bang, so I'm going to anchor that hair with my thumb and then smooth out this with the brush. Not doing it with too much pressure, just skimming the surface of the hair. And then you can use your fingers to really smooth it out. I get a lot of um, comments that they find that when they brush it out, they um, will get frizz, which I can totally relate to. And I'll show you kind of what I mean. The frizz is really common to get here at the bottom of the hair because you're kind of um, taking your tangles, taking your teasing, and bringing it all the way down to the ends. So all of the frizziness kind of meets at the ends. And the way that I get rid of this sort of frizzy end is I just brush it into my hand. It's all about kind of cupping the hair with your hands like this. You don't need to go back in with your steamer to remove this frizz. Just sort of cup it gently with your hands and I find that the frizziness goes away. Another reason why you might get frizziness is you might be using rollers that are too small. I remember in my um, first couple of wig tutorials, I used these orange rollers. Um, now you'll notice that I use these blue ones. I'll put a link down below if I can find it of where I got these, but I find if you use smaller rollers, you're gonna get obviously a smaller curl, but when you brush out those smaller curls, you're more 
prone to get frizz. Whereas if you get larger rollers, um, your curls aren't going to be as tight or as strong, but they're going to be kind of more like um, body waves, where it's less prone to frizz, but it's going to be a looser curl. So it really all depends just on your taste. Um, but now you'll see I have this beautiful wave here. I remember when I first kind of started um, learning how to style wigs, and you remember from my tutorials, if you've watched them, I would like put a roller here, put a roller here to kind of force the wave pattern where it wasn't. But I think over practice, I've kind of come to realize that you can get those natural wave patterns without having to do all of that extra work just by really carefully placing these in the curling step. If you want to get the look of the kind of swoopy bang, what I like to do is I put the hand right here and then kind of comb the hair towards me to kind of um, force the wave to come this way and then brush it out. Maybe force is not the right word to use. We're not forcing these waves to come in. These waves are the natural waves that came in because of the um, curlers. I'm just kind of bringing them together so it's more noticeable. Here there's an ugly patch of frizz, so I'm gonna brush that out. So you'll see here what I meant by the problem of doing the bangs, because if I tease them too much, it's hard to smooth out, but you can see if you don't tease it enough, the bang starts to droop, and I don't like that. So um, it's kind of hard to get that balance of teasing it just the right amount so that it stands up but doesn't look frizzy. And it's something that I still haven't really even mastered, but what I tend to do to trick it is I, I'll just use a lot of hairspray or, or I'll use bobby pins to help that bang really stand up. So once it's kind of the way that I like it, what I'll do to kind of keep this standing up um, is I'll just use hairspray like this. Also, I'll use it over here too. What I also like to do is I'll blow dry it and hairspray it at the same time to kind of seal in the hairspray. It just makes the hairspray a lot stronger. Now then what I do, um, if I can find some, I get a bobby pin and I should probably invest in some light bobby pins so that I can hide them better. But what I like to do is I'll try to kind of fix this bobby pin inside of this um, bang. And I don't do it right here, obviously. But the thing is when we tease it, we create um, a big nest of teasing. So the hair is all tied together because of how we backcombed it. So I can, I'm kind of cheat by putting the bobby pin a little bit farther back where it's not visible, but it'll kind of pull the bang towards it. Now notice what I'm not doing. I'm not taking the hairspray to the entire head of hair. I want this back hair especially to be light, fluffy, soft. I want, it, I want it to bounce and to dance around. So I'm only really adding hairspray in the parts that I need it. That way it also cuts down on how long I can go without washing this. Because when you hairspray everything, it makes it sort of hard and sticky and you'll have to wash it. So I really only add hairspray to these bangs just to emphasize the lift off from the face. And then from there, the last thing that I'll do is I'll just keep smoothing out any sort of frizziness that I see in the hair. But just keep in mind that the more you brush it, the flatter it's going to be. So um, brush it lightly, don't really brush it too hard, otherwise it's going to drag down all of that teasing and all of that fluffiness and air that we added to it. So be light-handed with your brush if you are going to brush it at all. If you want, you can add a little bit of hairspray to kind of tame some flyaways if you have any. Don't think that the hairspray is going to make your style last like a lot longer and make it immortal, I don't know. It's not going to happen. Like the style is going to um, move, it's going to get tussled as you're traveling and moving it around, putting it on, taking it off. There's really nothing you can do to make it last forever. The only thing that I want to last the longest is this part right here. This um, sectioning of the hair, the part, the bang, that's the part that I just want to last the longest. But the rest of the hair, I don't mind if it gets sort of tussled um, when I dance around with it, when I move, when I travel. So personally, I just embrace it. I go with a messy, tussled, just got out of bed look. Um, and that's pretty much the finished wig. That's really all I do to it. I am just gonna get in drag now and show you what it looks like on. I hope you guys liked this video and learned something cool. This is what the hair looks like when it's all finished. Um, one thing, let me add, sometimes I find that this bang piece, it's not really happening now, but sometimes I'll find like it is falling down my face. And what I always do is I just take a little bobby pin and I'll just clip it back so it's kind of out of the way. Just make sure it's sort of like discreet, like, I don't know. And then when I'm putting it on, I'll kind of just like brush through it and freshen it up with my fingers. I don't love the look of like little like 
ringlet looking curls so I always like try to like separate them and like brush through them. I don't know, it's not the cleanest, prettiest style I'm aware but who am I fooling? I'm not like trying to be the queen of England. I like my hair a little bit like big, sassy, has some attitude to it. The kind of hair that sounds like buy me a drink and then don't talk to me. Anyway, if you guys like this video, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and follow me on Instagram. It's the same as my YouTube online kind. Speaking of Instagram, want to hear something funny? The other day I got a comment. It was like, good job online. Like they thought that was my name. I was like, I know you ain't talking to me. To be fair though, I get this question a lot, so I should probably address it. Kine is my name, it's my drag name. Online, it's, I just added that like to be cute, like, oh, it rhymes. You can call me online kind or like, just kind, I don't know, you can call me whatever you want. Um, just don't call me online. I don't know, every time I explain it to people, they're always like, what? <laughs> Anyway, speaking of poor life choices, I hope you guys make the choice to subscribe to my channel. Before I go, I want to shout out some artists on Instagram who have been tagging me in their work recently. Um, these guys who have been recreating some of my tutorials and some of you who have been recreating my wig tutorials on your wigs. I always love seeing them. So I always ask that you guys tag me if you recreate one of my tutorials. Not even for the, oh, all credit goes to, like, I don't care about that. I just want to see it because I'm curious. So shout out to all of these people. And for the rest of you who support me, even if it's just through a double tap or a thumbs up or just a view. I really appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you want to see from me next and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!